Welcome to Green Connections Radio, where we help you live green, work green, and earn green. I'm Joan Michelson. Find us online on greenconnectionsradio.com, like us on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter at Joan Michelson. One of the key areas, as you would know from being a listener of Green Connections, where manufacturing is taking off and is so key, is in energy and sustainability. So we brought in today a fabulous woman who is right on the cutting edge of this issue of manufacturing and clean tech. Her name is Clara Osmail, and she is Senior Technical Advisor at the Manufacturing Extension Partnership in the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, or NIST, of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Um, She has been with NIST for about 15 years. She has two master's degrees. That's a lot of time in school. In physics and in optical sciences. And full disclosure, she told me when we met some time ago that she did some of her research around my great-great-uncle Albert Michelson's work in optics. So that was very cool for me. Clara helps small research and development and manufacturing businesses commercialize their technology technologies, including helping them identify and obtain the the services and resources they need. What I want to say also about Clara's background is Clara has done so much in this area that she was honored with the prestigious Tibbetts Award from the SBA, the Small Business Administration, for, quote, the critical role they play in research and development for the government and her success in driving innovation and creating new jobs. So bravo, Clara. Obviously, part of Clara's work is focused on clean energy manufacturing, and we are delighted to welcome Clara Asmel to Green Connections. Thanks for joining us, Clara. Thank you, Joan. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So let's start out by talking about this intersection of manufacturing and energy and clean tech, because people think of energy and they think of oil wells or they think of solar panels or whatever, but they don't automatically think about manufacturing. Tell us a little bit about what MEP is doing exactly in helping clean tech and energy companies commercialize their technologies. I'd love to. First, let me tell you what MEP is, and then I can get into how we get involved in that intersection. The Manufacturing Extension Partnership is a public-private partnership within the National Institute of Standards and Technology that is dedicated to helping small and medium-sized manufacturers to become more productive and compete globally in whatever fashion they need. I had been at the Small Business Innovation Research where lots and lots of companies are being awarded federal dollars to develop new technologies. And um, I realized that there was a precipice. After these technologies are developed, there's a long road to trek where they're not quite ready for commercial adoption. There's a lot of risk involved. So um, I I work in this manufacturing space to help de-risk that and to find the right partnering opportunities, the right kinds of mixes of uh, research partners and commercial folks folks, as well as state, local, and federal partners, too. Let me just ask you this really quickly before you continue. And these are only technologies, right? We only work with tangible products, oh. the manufacture of stuff, something that you you know that it's a, something if you drop it and it'll hit your foot. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. I love that. I love that. That's great. So you say it's a, private, a public-private partnership. You're the public part. What's the private part? Is it money from outside sources? Is it, is it, as I recall, I think it's talent from outside resources? All of it, yeah. So we have 60 centers across the country that are uh, the recipients of federal dollars from NIST, from National Institute of Standards and Technology, where MEP invests $1 for every $2 that they bring from other sources. So they have to go out and find city, county, regional, state funding to support what it is that they deliver ultimately to their clients, who will in turn as well have to pay for services that they receive. So it's matching funds, in effect. Mm-hmm. Can they put in that money from their, so you say from any other source, exactly. but literally can be any other source. It could be any other source. For the most part, all the centers do bring in state dollars. What has surprised you the most in working with these 60 centers and 10,000 companies around the country? What has surprised me most is that there is a very strong grassroots effort to reshore production back into this country. 
a lot of the decisions that were made 10 to 15, 20 years ago to go off to Asia to have products manufactured overseas is now being reanalyzed and say, hey, you know what, maybe the labor was cheap back then, but that's not the only factor in the equation. You've got the logistics, you've got transportation costs, you've got time to get to your customer, and you've got the feedback loop from your customer telling you what they want in the next generation of products that's not getting back into the factory floor. Oh, that's interesting. So because the products are getting designed here in the U.S., and the customers are probably mostly in the U.S., but also global. If the manufacturing is elsewhere, then the in effect, in effect the front line that's getting feedback can't then tweak the manufacturing process to re- uh, respond to that feedback in a timely fashion. That's exactly right, John. Wow. So it's not about the unemployment rate in this country. It is also about that. But in order to drive really high growth in unemployment. In addition to bringing back nominal numbers of jobs, you also want to to explode the number of jobs by coming up with innovation. And the only way that you're going to have innovation through new products is by understanding how the products that you're currently making can be made better. Wow, that's cool. Well, speaking of innovation, um, there's this new program called the National Network for Manufacturing Innovation. Tell us a little bit about that briefly. I'd love to. That is a proposal that President Obama has spoken about at the last two State of the Union addresses. And they sometimes refer to as manufacturing hubs. And individual agencies Department of Commerce, Department of Energy, Department of Defense have already put in money to fund individual pilot, if you will, institutes for manufacturing innovation. The institutes for manufacturing innovation in Youngstown, for example, Detroit and Chicago, they're they're effectively looking at Advancing the research out of federal laboratories, out of the universities. To get to the point where capital, would, private capital would be interested in exactly. stepping in. And what's cool about it is that these are consortia of companies that are coming together. For example, that first one in Youngstown has 100 members now, private members that are paying to be a part of this so they can have first access to the research results coming out of this. Let's say one of our listeners has a company that is an early stage manufacturer of, say, a new type of solar panel or a new type of solar thermal plant like Ivan Paul, and they want they come to the Manufacturing Extension Partnership in their neck of the woods. And they're looking for help. So take us through a day in the life or a week in the life of this relationship. Mm -hmm. Typically, the local MEP center would have somebody who would be responsive and wind up making an appointment with you pretty quickly. Within a week or two, they'd be at your plant and walk with you through your plant or your desktop, wherever the ideas may be, and come to understand what your status is and what your intentions are, or what stage you're in in terms of getting to revenue or getting your design to become manufacturable. Once there's an understanding of exactly where you are and where you want to go, what your goals are, what your objectives are, then they'll start work w- working with you on uh, prototyping if that's what you need, prioritizing basically what would be the next steps in order to achieve your goals, your goals. And they'd work with you on your goals as well. Who is giving them this advice? I mean, who are the type of people that work at a Manufacturing Extension Partnership regional office? Well, at any given MEP center, you'd be surprised at the how many hundreds of years of experience there are at each center. Um, each field engineer, as we call them, has on average, maybe 20, 25 years of industrial experience where they've been at a manufacturer or owned their own manufacturing company. Um, That's about 1,300 folks that we have out in the field. Two hours drive of anywhere you are in this country, um, except for Alaska and Hawaii, then it's a two-hour flight (laughs) that we could get to you. Um, So you'll have one of those 1,300 field engineers um, at your availability, and then another 2,300 third-party folks that we have all sorts of connections with. We, um, they could be financial experts, um, people in the supply chain, people who have particular experience in that 
sector that needs to understand what the requirements might be um, that would be available. Okay, so um, just quickly wrapping up two two questions. That first of all, uh, tell us a story about some clean tech company that um, went through the MEP process and has come out the other side to commercialization. Well, I'd like to tell you about the, a really cool program that I think that you're listeners are going to be interested in. It's um, it's not a particular company. It's a class. It's a cadre of professionals that are going to be coming out that are actually already coming out. The Pacific Northwest National Lab, part of the Department of Energy up in Washington State, uh, several years ago um, released a, a, a curriculum, if you will, a, a, a set of training modules to um, address all the various HVAC and energy consumption issues within a commercial building. By commercial, I could include um, industrial, educational, any kind of non-residential. So this is focused on making buildings more energy efficient and uh, less resource heavy, so exactly. less water. Now, that that's in the public domain, but it's not quite easily accessible um, by the the front end folks. So what we've done at MEP is um, captured all that information and created curricula that are now being um, uh, distributed through three centers, California, up in Philadelphia, and up in New York City, um, that will train hundreds of building operators, um, all sorts of building managers and energy service providers as well at, at the utility companies. Um, they're going to provide energy performance solutions um, in, of all sorts to save companies anywhere from 5 to 20 percent on their energy bills. Um, so these are going to be building professionals that are going to enter the workforce with the critical skills needed for building energy optimization and reducing waste and saving everybody money that's been wasted. Just wrapping it up here, do you guys have a best practices database where, um, you know, one of our listeners who's struggling with some issue can put in their issue and get some answers? You have to keep in mind that uh, any companies going to meet with an MEP professional will be for free. The first few hours, maybe up to eight, ten hours, are going to be free. That whole assessment... Getting to know each other in terms of, you know, where you are in the company and where you want to go. Um, but then you, you, as soon as you get into a project um, that's specific to your company, then you negotiate be between the company and the MEP center, and the costs are very well priced, um, but it will be for a fee. Very cool. Very cool. Well, gosh, you and I could talk for about four hours, I can tell, about all this, and I'd love to hear some more stories. So um, if we're lucky, maybe we'll get Clara to do an article for our website, too, to give us a little more, a few more tips. But anyway, thank you for joining us, Clara Asmail, who is Senior Technical Advisor at the Manufacturing Extension Partnership of NIST at the Department of Commerce in the, here in the U.S., um, and the winner of the Tibbetts Award, which I just love for her critical role in driving innovation and creating new jobs. Uh, specialist in clean tech, which I adore, and thank you so much for being here. Um, we will have links to Clara's program for manufacturing extension partnerships and the National Network for Manufacturing Innovation on our website as well, greenconnectionsradio.com. Thank you, Joan. I love all that information from Clara. That was really great. Um, and by the way, I need to correct something. Clara has spent 25 years at NIST, um, not 15, and we want to make sure she gets full credit for her tenure there and her amazing innovation work there. Um, here's what I heard Clara say. First of all, I heard if you are an innovator and a small business owner or even a medium-sized business owner, you should check out the Manufacturing Extension Partnership and at the very least ask for a free assessment. You can get eight to 10 hours for free, go for it. They're probably, as she said, within two hours drive from where you are, so give it a, give it a try. There's 60 centers nationwide with, it sounds like, about 3,000 different 
uh, people available to consult with you on whatever problem you probably are facing and that has that's re- um, related to manufacturing. Um, that we need to cur- we need to accelerate commercialization in this country. And I love the fact that she's seeing a trend towards bringing manufacturing back to the U.S. and that it's a practical decision. Yes, it's moral in the sense of increasing employment in this country, but it's also practical from the standpoint of needing to integrate feedback from the customers more quickly. I mean, we we live in a really fast-paced economy right now, obviously, right? So in order to be responsive to your customers, you need to be able to change your product uh, manufacturing process or aspects about the design very quickly um, to keep your customers and get new ones. And I love that that's bringing jobs back to the U.S. and that that value is outweighing the potential savings in cheap labor in other parts of the world. So here, here on that. Um, these innovation hubs are very cool. And these uh, professionals around the country that are coming out, um, I understand the program is E3, which is the triple bottom line, economy, energy, and environment. Um, California, Philadelphia, New York City, reach out and see where they're about, especially if you're in building manufacturing in any way, providing energy systems, because those are critical skills. We've got, you know, buildings are about 40% of the energy use in this country. So this is a critical inflection point in my view. So send us your ideas. You can email us at info at greenconnectionsradio.com. Send it to me on Twitter at Joan Michelson or post it on our Facebook page. So thank you again for joining us. This is Joan Michelson with Green Connections Radio, where we help you live green, work green, and earn green. Thank you so much. See you next time. Capital Audio Post, your one-stop shop for your post-production needs. 703-712-8757. Our services include video editing, sound design, sound mixing, ISDN recording, and many other media-related services. Let us finish your project no matter where you are, across the U.S. or across the world. Go to www.capitalaudiopost.com. Call us at 703-712-8757. Let us know how we can help you finish your production.